Math 13, 14, Tyler Junior College, section 1.7, Linear and Absolute Value Inequalities. You'll notice there's a lot on the board already. Before we get into inequalities and how to solve them, we need to discuss inequalities, number lines, and intervals. Now, what do I mean by an interval? Well, loosely speaking, an interval is a description of a portion of a number line from left to right. So you always describe it from left to right. And one thing I want to establish up front is we will be using two different symbols to surround our interval, one on the left and one on the right. The symbols will either be parentheses or brackets. We'll use parentheses whenever we do not want to include the number on the end of the interval. That'll make a little more sense in just a moment. And we'll use brackets whenever we do want to include a number on either end of an interval. And just as a note, negative infinity and positive, positive infinity will always use parentheses. You'll notice on the board, I've already got a table set up with three columns. One with an inequality in each row. One with a number line that's already set up but not shaded in yet. And then the third column will be our interval. I'm going to assume that you remember the symbols greater than and less than, and greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. For the first inequality where we have x is greater than three, how would you draw a number line for that? Well, where on the number line are the numbers greater than three? To the left of three or to the right of three? The numbers greater than three are to the right of three. So I would shade in the portion of the number line to the right of three. Now before I get to the three, I'm gonna stop right in front of it because on the boundary, the beginning of the, of the shaded portion, we have to decide whether or not three is part of this inequality or not, and what symbol do we use to represent it, whether it's a part of the inequality or not. Since this quality says x is greater than three, as opposed to x is greater than or equal to three, the first inequality does not allow x to equal three. Think about it, if I put a three here and said three was greater than three, that's not true. So three is not part of this inequality, which means on the number line, we need a symbol at the three to say you are not included. Now I know a lot of people are familiar with an empty circle, which isn't wrong, but because we're going to be discussing interval notation, we're not gonna use an empty circle on a number line to mean you are not included. We're going to use a parentheses to mean you are not included and the parentheses should open up towards the shaded part. So parentheses opening to the right of three would represent the inequality x is greater than three. Let's go ahead and do all of the number lines and then we will write the interval notation for each one. For the second one, x is greater than or equal to three, we still want the numbers greater than three. So we would still shade to the right of three. But unlike the first inequality, the second one allows x to be equal to three. In other words, if we put a three where the x is, that statement would be true. Three is greater than or equal to three. So we need a symbol on the number line at the three that says three, you are included in this number line, in this shaded part of the number line. To include a number on the number line, we can use a bracket. <coughs> Excuse me. You may be familiar with, a, familiar with a circle that's filled in, and that's not wrong. But again, because we're going to be using interval notation, we'll be using a different symbol to say, I want to include the three. In this case, it's a bracket, and it opens towards the shaded part. So bracket opening to the right, and then shading to the right of three, represents x is greater than or equal to three. How would the next two differ? 
x is less than 3 and x is less than or equal to 3. Well, since these both say less than, we need to shade in the portion of the number line where the numbers are less than 3. And where are those? The numbers less than 3 are to the left of 3. So let's shade in everything to the left of 3. And we'll stop at the 3 and then make a decision on whether we need a parenthesis or bracket. Let's go ahead and do both of these. Which one will get a bracket? Well, that depends. Which one includes 3 as part of its solution? Answer, this one, since it says x is less than or equal to. So we would use a bracket, but this time it would open to the left since it has to open towards the shaded part. And on the one above it, x is less than 3, since this does not include the number 3, we need a parenthesis on the number line at 3, opening towards the left, towards the shaded part. Just remember, if it says or equal to, you will use a bracket, otherwise you will use a parenthesis. There's a visual gimmick to help you remember that. If you see a little straight line on the bottom of this symbol, you should see a little straight line on the bottom of this symbol. If it helps. Now the last four inequalities are a little bit different. These are known as compound inequalities, meaning more than one inequality. For example, the first one says negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 3. So really, this is two inequalities. Negative 3 is less than x. And x is less than 3. So what do we shade? Well, I know what x is less than 3 is. Those are the numbers to the left of 3. But what is negative 3 is less than x? Well, to, I call that a backwards inequality. There's nothing wrong with it. But normally when you have an inequality with a variable, you, you want to start off with the variable as the subject of the sentence that you're saying. x is greater than 3. x is less than or equal to 3. The problem with this half of the compound inequality is that the subject of the sentence is negative 3. Negative 3 is less than x. How can I say an equivalent statement with x is the subject? Well, if negative 3 is less than x, then that means that x is greater than negative 3. What that means is, since x is greater than negative 3, we want the portion of the number line to the right of negative 3, but at the same time, to the left of positive 3. So which portion of the number line is simultaneously to the right of negative 3, but to the left of positive 3? The portion in between them. And we have to decide on the end points, boundaries if you will, whether to use brackets or parentheses. But since both of these say less than and neither say less than or equal to, then neither the 3 nor negative 3 are included and therefore both of them will have parentheses opening towards the shaded portion. The last three are going to be pretty easy because the x is still between negative 3 and 3. So on all of these, we are going to shade between negative 3 and 3. The only difference is what symbols we're going to use on the 3 and what symbols we're going to use on the negative 3. On this one, both of the inequalities say or equal to, which means we want to include both the negative 3 and the 3, which means both of them get brackets. The negative 3 gets a bracket opening towards the right, and the 3 gets a bracket opening towards the left. You always open the bracket with parentheses towards the shaded part. But on the last two, we have a mixture. On the second to last one, which number will get a bracket, the negative 3 or the 3? Since the second inequality is less than or equal to, then we want to include the 3, which means the 3 will have a bracket opening towards the left. But we don't want to include the negative 3, so that would be a parenthesis opening towards the right. And in the last one, it's the exact opposite. Because it starts out, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, we want to include the negative 3, 
So bracket on the negative 3 opening to the right. But since it says x is less than 3, we don't want to include the 3. Parentheses on 3 opening to the left. Drawing the number line for an inequality is pretty straightforward. It's usually a decision of shade left or right or in between. And do I use a bracket or do I use a parentheses? But how do you write the interval for each of these? Intervals are really easy to write if you have a number line to refer to. That being said, you don't need a number line to write an interval. It just helps. To, to describe what shaded in on a number line, you simply start by writing where it begins. For example, on the top one, from left to right, the shading begins at 3. Let's use a different colored marker. I was watching videos from the previous series and realized that the green marker wasn't showing up too well. So on the first number line, the shaded portion starts at 3. And then you put a comma, and then you put where it ends. Well, this one doesn't technically end, it goes forever. So how can we say that it goes forever? We can use the infinity symbol. It's almost as if, as if you're saying infinity is at the end, of the right end of the number line. It's not, because it's, it's, a, it's not a destination, it's a journey. You can't get to infinity, you can just keep more, moving closer towards it. So this shaded portion of the number line begins at 3 and ends at, at infinity. But there's more to an interval. We also have to put symbols indicating whether or not those values are included. And it's the same symbols we used on the number line. Since we're not including the 3, we would put a parenthesis in front of it. As far as infinity goes, you can't ever get there, so it's impossible to include it. Therefore, it always gets a parenthesis. Negative infinity and infinity always use parentheses. So the interval for x is greater than 3 is parentheses 3, comma infinity, parentheses. I would only have to make one change for the next number line's interval. Do you know what it is? It still starts at 3, it still goes to infinity, and infinity always gets parentheses. But I'm including the 3, so it, it gets a bracket. What about the third one? Remember, you always describe it from left to right. How far to the left does this go? Infinity? No, infinity is over here. In infinity is all the way to the right. All the way to the left is negative infinity. So the third number line begins at negative infinity, comma, and it ends at 3. Infinities always get parentheses, and this 3 has a parentheses because it's not included. And for the fourth number line, it's the same thing, except the 3 has a bracket on it. So parentheses, negative infinity, comma, 3, bracket. The last four compound inequalities do not go forever left or right, so we won't be using any infinities. The fifth number line begins at negative 3, comma, and ends at 3. Neither are included, so both use parentheses. And in the next number line, it still begins at negative 3, comma, and ends at 3. But both values are included, so both ends of the interval have brackets. It is possible to have mixed symbols, such as the last two. The seventh number line begins at negative 3 and ends at 3, but the negative 3 is not included, so it starts with parentheses. The positive 3 is included, so it ends in a bracket. And then on the last one, which also begins at negative 3, comma, and ends at positive 3, has a bracket on the negative 3 because it's included, but a parenthesis on the positive 3 because it's not. So going from number line to interval is fairly trivial. You just say, where does it start? Where does it end? It's always left to right. And then use brackets and parentheses as necessary.